Hello guys, this is Icy Blue 487 This is now one of my vlogs. Basically, I'm going to be talking about NekuCon, pretty much an anime convention that I go to every single year. I lost count how many times I go to NekuCon is far past the 10th time that I've gone to NekuCon. This year, NekuCon started off a little bit differently. I know on Thursday, before the actual convention started, I had to wait about 5 hours and 30 minutes to get my badge, and I pre-registered, because apparently their systems was down, and NekuCon cannot handle it when someone pays for their badge with PayPal. So, next year, I will definitely... Definitely be sending in my money through the mail instead because that was horrible and I really debate on going to go pick up my badge early because that was hell. Saturday, I actually did not attend any tournaments over at NekaCon. Instead, I went to a place called That Game Store. So I missed uh, pretty much majority of Saturday. So no dolls, no Lolita, nothing like that and no cosplay events for me. Instead, I was participating in Injustice to get a possible sponsorship for NEC over in December, which did not happen because I did not win that tournament. But it was awesome getting to face skilled people on like at NekaCon where the, uh, where beating where people online gives me far more challenge than people at NekaCon because they're scrubs, tons and tons of scrubs, and I I'm kind of tired of beating up scrubs. I don't even have to open my eyes. But other than that, I did actually have fun playing with a few people in Blaze Blue, and yeah, there were some skilled people in Blaze Blue, so they weren't bad. And I actually sat down and played Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, which sounds like blasphemy to the people that know me, but hey, why not? Most of my time at NekaCon was spent going to the panels where I learned pretty much a lot. Uh, one of the first panels I went to was making a female character a lot more stronger than uh, just giving her a really big sword or making her really physically stronger. That's pretty much a mistake that I hear a lot from people that say they want strong feminine, they want strong female characters and instead the creator just makes the female characters, very strong. For the most part, the panelists did say to focus on making a character, their personalities, their motivations, their wants, their goals. Give them flaws. Do not be afraid to give your character flaws. And then worry about their gender later. A lot of great characters have been made uh, pretty much without the creator thinking about their gender first. And... I, I can't really think of any examples right now. One of the greatest examples that they're bringing up was Samus Aran Ar Samus from Metroid and was it Rickley from the Alien series, which are pretty cool characters. Of course, they were like, Project M does not exist. No one should even think about that game. I have not played it, but I've seen cutscenes from it, and that's just horrible. Talked about something called Fridging. It's um, it's basically making the girlfriend, dog, boyfriend, whatever, uh, just a character that basically has no purpose but to move the hero forward, and it it's really terrible. It could involve possibly killing the girlfriend, and just like making the main character upset in order to go after the villain and. And it's just like they went more in detail. I was just like, uh, oh, that's that's gross. It really made me um think about my writing and what I'm gonna be doing with my characters. I definitely would like to make characters more than just uh even the ones that are gonna die off early. I would like to make their uh personality seem fleshed out and make them seem more than just a plot device. There was the music panel where a guy sat down and showed us how he went about making music. The software they used was pretty darn expensive. And speaking of creating uh, music, um, 
During the same time over at NecoCon, there was a guy that emailed me and was like, I want to make music for your visual novel, which I was like, oh, cool. So basically going to the man the panel where the guy was creating music gave me an idea as to what uh, people go through when they're making music, which being an indie game developer, I will definitely have to wear a ton of hats and I'm glad for the most part not to have to mess around with music for the fact that I I just don't get, I just don't get music. I honestly don't. I'd have no rhythm. I just don't get music. After going to the artist alley, I got to talk to a wonderful woman who I brought several artwork from her that just looking at it pretty much expires me to sit down and get more and more into anatomy work no matter uh, how tired I am or what job that I have that takes up majority of my free time and just get really, really good. I spoke to her and she gave me some really nice tips about like setting up, I guess, my artist booth, wherever you call it, whenever someday I get to sell artwork at a convention and and how to market myself. And she just seemed very happy to talk to people regardless. And I guess I'll definitely have to work on my personal skills for the moment. I will definitely... um. Next time I go to NECACON, I want to go to the auction side in the artist alley and put up some artwork for, I guess, display and see if anyone bids on my artwork. If people begin to bid on my artwork, then I know I've definitely gotten somewhere, which would be pretty darn cool. The last two panels was basically, last three panels that I really enjoyed was History of Yaoi and, okay, I remember, it's, this panel was called Yaoi Clichés and I got to learn a bunch of stuff that I didn't know that people were into now with Yaoi and my boyfriend is quite the amazing boyfriend who went to these Yaoi panels with me. He actually is not bothered by Yaoi at all, but the last Yaoi panel I went to um, introduced us to some of the fetishes found on Tumblr these days, and he's like, what the hell? But... Aside from that, um, what the other things that the ladies spoke about in the panel really gave me some good insight as to uh, what people are into. And there's there's a lot of variety in Yaoi these days. I will never be into Bara. But there's I wanted to see uh, what kind of Yaoi people are interested in. The There are people that love the Yaoi where they just get straight, straight down into like the sex scenes like really quickly. Me, I really, really love the romantic buildup before, you know, before the sex scenes. And I don't know, I just love having connections. Um, this goes for any type of pairing being straight, uh, Yuri, lesbian, and, um, Yaoi. So, I don't know, it's just, it just gave me some ideas, so when I get to my next visual novel, which would be Boy Times a Boy, um, what kind of pairings I should go for and stuff like that, there would be the romantic types, there would be the, uh, I, I just want physical contact already, just shut up, stop talking to me, let's do it, and just, um, just giving myself some kind of variety. I spoke to the lady like after the panel and she gave me some ideas and told me to go look on Tumblr. But uh, after seeing some of the images she pulled from Tumblr, I am indeed scared. But I will try to be brave and search and see what people are into. Um, one thing I did learn that a lot of uh, game companies are noticing what attracts people to video games and one technique that uh, Cap one of the people from Capcom did use was for one of the Resident Evils was when they made sure that Resker had screamed Chris's name in certain ways that would get people to start writing Yaoi fanfiction for Chris and Resker, which I find absolutely um, hilarious and <laughs> and I pre I already know that definitely did work. It is nice that uh, game developers are trying to see what women are into and how to catch them. And even the panel about writing uh, strong female characters, one of the 
male panelists did say that he made a mistake uh, drawing a bunch of sexy female characters. So he started adding a lot more beefcake <laughs> to his uh, to his comic. Things seem to be getting better these days in that aspect, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, last panel that was pretty darn awesome was the Crunchyroll, how to get a job at Crunchyroll panel. And pretty much... Um, if you go to crunchyroll.com slash jobs, you can basically see all the jobs that they have. And most most of their positions are definitely located in San Francisco, uh, California, I believe. And if you're really good at a particular language at translating things, then you can definitely get a job remotely instead of moving to San Francisco. But other than that, the other jobs that I saw that was working remotely was the customer service rep with position, which I'm pretty darn sad about because I was in the middle of filling out that application for customer service rep and they filled the position up before I can click that submit button. Just got, I was unable to finish the job application, which sucked. I sent an email and they saw my email and, they're, and all the qualifications I have and they were like, wow. You look like a definite good fit, but we already filled up the job applications like a few minutes ago. And I was just so sad because that seemed like my dream job, even though I despise Hope Dusk. But working for Crunchyroll and an anime company just seems so awesome. Oh, well, I, I guess I can always try next month. Um... Aside from that, I just wanted to tell y'all guys my time at NECACON. This video was pretty darn long. Um, I know probably only a few of you have gone through it. Uh, thank you guys for actually looking through this whole entire video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.